Well, you would have heard in our news uh, some businesses looking at reconfiguring their office space for a, what do they call it, a hybrid model of attendance at the office. And, of course, Wellington full of public servants who are working, I use the term advisedly, from home. And everywhere you are seeing, mainstream media, you are seeing articles saying you can negotiate harder with your boss. Are you getting what you want out of your job? It seems to me the power balance in terms of employment has shifted in times of very, very low unemployment. Is this a challenge for business? Has COVID changed the worker-boss relationship? Well, to uh, answer that question or perhaps talk around it, uh, we're joined by Kirk Hope, uh, Head of Business New Zealand. Kirk, welcome to the pro platform again. Nice to have you with us. Thanks, Sean. Good morning. Uh, morning. Look, I am reading all the time now advisories from young millennial journalists about how young millennial people can take on the boss and have their dream job. Is there a new, and I'm not going to call it militants, but is there a new willingness to negotiate with bosses that we haven't seen for a while in this country? Uh, we'll, we'll look at, you, all you need to do is look at, uh, I think, a press release from the Minister of Finance yesterday that said wage growth best on record. And then the follow-up from the Reserve Bank, uh, who yesterday increased the official cash rates, which is, of course, the driver of retail interest rates, by 50 basis points or half a percent. Um, and and they said they're planning another uh, increase uh, in the next round of, of changes. That'll take the official cash rate to the highest it's been in 14 years. Um, to tell you, yes, but there's something going on. Um, so, of course, uh, we have... Uh, we haven't had people coming into the country for some time. Uh, we've got extremely low unemployment uh, at 3.3%. So, of course, uh, businesses, uh, uh, we still have quite strong demand, which is a good thing. Mm. But, uh, of course, wage, wage growth is extremely strong. Yeah. That wage growth, though, essentially gets negated by interest rate rises, doesn't it? Yeah, well, certainly, uh, you know, as interest rate rates rise and this is the purpose of them it takes uh, your ability to buy stuff out of your uh, out of your pocket because you've got to you know pay for your uh, housing costs uh, and and of course the other thing about that is that often the first thing that gets paid for is the mortgage right so it, it's absolutely designed uh, to take take money out of your pocket um, so there, there, there's some things that business has been saying you know are we in a wage price spiral um, and, and bank economists have said we're not in that state yet um, because we haven't had enough rounds of this, uh, you know, wage growth um, driving inflation. But if we got into another year of it, which is what the Reserve Bank seem to be suggesting, then we probably are in that. And then you can expect to see higher, higher interest rate rises again. Mm. Are your members happy or comfortable with this new era of Bolshe employees? Um, look, I mean, I think they're just dealing with it. What's in front of them? Uh, if they've still got really strong demand for their goods or services, mm. they're simply trying to find the best people to be able to deliver that. And if they have to pay more, which they've had to, in some cases substantially, uh, they're, they're willing to do it. Um, I guess the, the, the New Zealand... Yeah, if you look at population growth in New Zealand, our population has only grown by 0.2%. We're depopulating. So what that means is uh, if... If you don't allow uh, immigration to fill some of these spots and you don't have an effective enough training system, we're going to be in this space for some period of time. Mm. Are employers also finding, or businesses also finding, some people are reluctant to go back to actually turning up for work in the office and doing their jobs and then going home? <laughs> yeah, I mean... So the, the word flexibility is is, um, is bandied around a lot. I mean, I, I guess the thing is that there are a lot of businesses who, who have geared themselves up to enable this, um, both pre-COVID and during COVID. Um, and there are there are people who are saying, actually, I don't want to go back in the office certain days a week. What businesses are now finding is, and, and they're setting a set of rules around this, we need you in the office two or three days a week. Um, we accept that, you know, you might have two days where you, we can work from home. They're having to accept that because, you know, we've got really, really severe labour shortages. Mm. Will this change or would this change if those labour shortages evaporate and are filled? 
can we expect to see, if you like, the balance of power shift back? Well, the answer would be uh, probably not in, in medium, uh, medium and high-skilled occupations. Uh, I, I suspect what you'd find is employers wanting to retain those employees that are really effective at their job because, of course, there are costs to employing a new person. A, there are recruitment costs, and then B, there are training costs. You know, you need to get that person up to speed with your organisation. So it's actually better to retain someone within your organisation. So those are kind of some important things that are going on. So even with immigration, that's just going to simply enable you to, you know, your business to meet the demand that you currently have, they currently have. All right. Um... You talked about, you said you do not believe we are in a wage inflation uh, a spiral. Um, why not? Um, many would say we are. Yeah, sure. So that's not my view. That's a view that's been expressed by bank economists. Um, you know, obviously, from a business perspective, that's what we're extremely worried about. And if you look at the Reserve Bank's statements yesterday, they seem to be worried about it and planning and planning for it, which is why they hiked the official cash rate by, by half a percent yesterday and, and have, have indicated that they're likely to raise it by another half percent the next time they review the official cash rate. So, so they seem to think we are. They also said uh, previously that they thought inflation would decline by you know middle of 2023, that we'd been that we're through mm. peak inflation. They've now said it looks much more likely to be 2024. All right. Um, what would your advice be to employers who are feeling under the pump, who feel like they are at huge disadvantage, while a bunch of newly militant and empowered workers <laughs> say they don't want to come into the office and they want a 15% pay rise? How do you get through that? Yeah, you know, look, it's no doubt challenging. I mean, the the thing that the thing that we have to that all employers are, ha are having to do is is to think about what the shape of that employment looks like. And if they have to if they have to say, okay, we'll we'll, we'll enable you to work from home or enable you to work flexibly, we'll do that. I mean, I think employers are doing other things. They're looking at um, different. Uh, different ways people can do more work. So New Zealand had a reasonably high what's called underutilisation rate, so more part-time workers, so more of those people are actually working, moving into full-time work. Uh, so they're looking at ways, so I'll give you a practical example of what that looks like. Um, uh, some businesses have changed their shift hours, shift hours to enable um, carers uh, to be able to work during school hours, so nine between nine and three, so that they can drop off and pick up, or nine thirty to yeah. to two thirty. So they've actively changed those shifts to enable that um, to happen. Um, of course, those fifteen percent uh, claims. Um, are not often being met because um, it's simply too high. Businesses can't afford to pay them. They can't, they can't change their pricing mm. that quickly to endure a 15% pay increase within the organisation. All right, Kirk, it is uh, interesting times we live in. I thank you for, for joining us. We'll talk again soon. That is Kirk, soon. That is Kirk Hope from Business New Zealand. So, yes, workers, you have the power. Don't be listening to this, Ben. Except to my own staff at the platform, I am the completely dominant alpha male boss in the whole setup for us. Don't you try any of this negotiation rubbish with me. Um, I think this is a reality of the workplace, of many workplaces now. And all I would say to those workers, all I would say to you workers, you great unwashed out there, uh, enjoy it while you can, because generally, to be honest, I, I think the boot's generally on the other foot. But straight from Business New Zealand there, yep. If you're a worker and your skills are needed, you've got some real negotiating power right now. Problem is, if you negotiate too hard, if you put up your price too much, businesses, manufacturers will put up their prices and no one actually ends up uh, much better off uh, in the end of it.